Hello, men. Men of integrity, our kingdom Bible study. Getting ready to start and working in the barn. That's where we're going. Figures since I'm working there. Let's have some man time. You know, kind of like a man cave. You know, last week we talked a lot about the Lord. And, you know, being in his will, but we're going to talk today about renewing our minds and what it takes to renew our minds and what's important about renewing our minds. So we'll go in, some quiet time. I'm going to fix this place up pretty soon. I'm going to, I'm going to put a basketball court in this thing. That's what I'm going to do. But for right now, it's time to get into the word. Okay, today guys, we're gonna talk about something important. I know when I got saved, I mean, I was 25 years old, I was young, but I, you know, I just didn't know how I could be good. I mean, really good. There were guys that around me in that Bible study where I got saved that were, I mean, I mean, they knew the Lord, you know, it's probably 16 of them. They really knew the Lord. And I always thought, you know, how could I think like them? How could I be like them? Um, how can I know the Lord, you know, like them? So it wasn't until, you know, many years later that, you know, uh, things started to transform. And it came through, you know, the things that we'll talk about today, you know, Knowing who I am in Christ first, okay? Knowing that it could actually happen. Guys, it can actually happen. In order for us to become men of integrity and be examples to our wives, godly examples to our wives and godly examples to our children, and more importantly, be a light, a beacon of light for other men out there who think, you know, honestly, being a Christian is a punk. But I'm gonna tell you what, being a Christian is more tougher than being out in the world. Because we have to adhere to certain standards. We have to bite our tongues when you know we really don't want to bite our tongues, okay? So it's actually tougher to be a Christian than it is to be out there in the world. The world says anything, anything goes. You can do anything you want. You can cuss, you can swear, you can hit people, you can cheat on your wife, you can cheat on people, you can, you can disrespect people. But the, but the word of God says that's not for us. That's not who we are as kingdom men, okay? But in doing that, we've got to we've got to change the way we think, you know, and a lot of it comes through uh, things that are coming into our head. You know, men, we need to stop. We need to stop watching things on TV that we shouldn't watch. We need to stop watching things on our phones that we shouldn't watch. We need to stop saying the things that we shouldn't say. I'm talking about things that are in the world, nasty things, hurtful things, vulgar things. We, we've got to change those things. And the only way we're going to change those things is, re, is changing what goes in our head and the things that we see, things that we touch, people that we hang around, places that we go to. Those are the things that are going to renew our minds. And if we're serious about being godly men of integrity, loving our wives, treating our wives like they're supposed to be treated, treating our kids the way they're supposed to be treated, treating our bodies the way they're supposed to be treated, the only way we're going to do that is we're going to renew our mind. And I'm constantly renewing my mind, literally. My wife talks to me about some things and I find that, whoa, hey, I got I to gotta change my little thinking on that. I mean, she's bringing something to me. I, I, I ooh, so I, I got to renew my mind in that area. So it's a never ending quest. But the thing is, you start from a place and you grow 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 and you keep growing until we get to the kingdom. <laughs> okay, to eternity. Well, we'll have it all then. But right now we're in a growing process, a maturation process. And honestly, guys, it starts with us saying that, hey, if we can believe that all things are possible through Christ, then there's a possibility that we could do it. As a matter of fact, it's a promise that we can get there. It may be little steps. It may be bigger steps. It might be giant steps. 
but we can get there because that's a promise. So I want to focus on a couple of scriptures. Uh, the first one is uh, is First uh, Corinthians uh, thirteen eleven, and I'm gonna have I'm gonna have it read so we all can hear it. So listen. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. I Corinthians thirteen eleven. Yeah, that's First Corinthians uh, thirteen eleven, and what uh, what Paul is saying, you know, hey, when I was a kid. When I was a little child, okay, I thought like a child. I did stupid things. I didn't watch my tongue, okay? I had, I had no care about anything. And, 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 and so I did what I wanted. And what I, what, I, what I did that wasn't good was passed off because I was a little child. Everybody accepted it, okay? So when you become a Christian, there's going to be some things that you're going to do. It's going to be off base. But then you have to realize that and realize who you are. And once you realize who you are, you have to put those things aside. I'm no longer that 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 person anymore. And now you're maturing in Christ. And now you're thinking, hey, I'm mature enough now to put that one thing aside. It might not be everything. Matter of fact, it won't be everything. It'll be one thing at a time that you'll nip on and nip on and nip on. But once you thought like a child and now you're an adult, you don't think the same way now as you do when you were a, a, a child. And it works the same way in the body of Christ. There's things that you don't know now that you do, but there's things later on as you mature that you'll find out and you're going to have to take a different approach to when you, when you were young and, and, and young in the word. And it was hard for you. Your faith wasn't strong. You know, your, your, your commitment wasn't strong. Your belief wasn't strong. But as that muscle grows, okay, you start maturing. And when you start maturing, you start doing different things. You start doing things of God because you're strong enough to do it now. Maybe it's your friends, you know, talk about you, you know, uh, like a dog, only because, hey, I know the way you were. You trying to tell me you're a Christian now? All right, being a young Christian, that could be intimidating for your buddies. That's the only buddies you have. Until you change your association. You start going to church and start going to Bible study, start going to group, uh, Christian groups, uh, uh, meetings, uh, and, and and, uh, uh, you know, hanging around, you know, the body of believers, then you get a whole new thing coming into your, in, into your mindset, into your thought process, into your mind. You know, they're supporting you, you know, loving Christ and doing the right things. But when you're out there in the world, they're not going to support you. Okay, so when you grow up, you might have to find a whole new set of friends. I know I did. And those friends that I do have that aren't Christians now, because I do have friends that aren't Christians. I just pray for them, but it doesn't change me. They don't come at me like, hell, oh, man, you're a Christian, man. They don't, they don't kid with my word, okay? Because I'll strike right back at them, all right? Or I'll dismiss them as my friends. That's easy for me to do. Again, I can still have a friend and just not hang around you, all right? So we got we to gotta figure that out. So we have to grow up in the word. Uh, Romans 12, 12, you know, talks about us not being in this world. All right. And I'll let us listen to that real fast and we'll talk about that. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind mm -hmm. that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Romans 12. Yeah. Two. Romans 12 two. Listen, this is Paul. He's trying to get these guys straight saying, listen, don't conform to this world and the likes of it. Don't don't do that. You know, uh, be re renewed in your mind and transform it and do what's pleasing to God. Not to man, not to your friends who aren't saved, who don't know the direction they're going. You got to go a different way. Now, this is all wrapped around us being men of integrity because I'm going to be coming to you in the future talking about things that, hey, guys, we need to do this for our wives. We need to do this for people. We need to do this for our friends. We need to do this for our kids. And if you don't have a mind of Christ, if you haven't set those old ways aside and now start beginning to work a whole new way, a new way in Christ, uh, you're going to buck the things that I'm saying. You're going to maybe talk about me. You know, he thinks he's this, he, uh, he can't do this. Well, he's No, 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 no. Get your mind right. Let go of the things of the world. Okay, start embracing yourself around Christ, renewing your mind, making yourself a different person. 
Now, I don't know if you can hear this, okay? Uh, but I want to read this one. I don't want to uh, put it on the recorder. It's in Philippians 4, 8. Okay? Paul's saying this to the Philippians. Okay? Finally, brothers, whatsoever things that are true, whatever things that are noble, whatever things that are just, whatever things that are pure, I'm knocking out a lot of stuff now. Okay? Whatever things that are lovely, whatever things that are of good report. If there's any virtue and if there is any praiseworthy meditated, meditated on these things, okay? If there are any of those things that I just read, meditate on those things, whatever things that are true, whatever things that are that are noble, whatever things that are just, whatever things that are pure, whatever things that are lovely and of good report. I want you to meditate on these things, which helps me renew my mind, renew my spirit, renew my thought process and the way I look at things. And you'll find that you're going to be looking at things completely different than you used to look at things. It's not going to be the same. I know I look at things completely different. Things that I used to do, I don't do those things. I put those old things aside and now I'm a new person in Christ. And with being a new person in Christ, I can start treating life differently. I can start treating my wife differently. I can start treating my kids differently. I can start treating my boss differently. I can treat my neighbor differently because I'm a new person. I set aside the old things. All things become new in Christ. And that's my petition for you today. Begin, guys, to renew your mind. Come on. Be a different person. I'm going to tell you something. Give me a 30-day trial. Let's do that. Let's do a 30-day challenge. Okay? And I challenge you to begin renewing your mind today for the next 30 days. Now, I'll give you some tips. When you wake up in the morning, get your phone. Get the iHeart app. I'll show you what that looks like. Get the iHeart app. And you go to a Christian station. That's iHeart Radio. Okay? Go there. And when you go there, find a Christian station. Fish is a Christian station. K-Love is a Christian music station. If you want to go and uh, uh, look up Talk Christian Radio, look that up. When you get up in the morning while you get dressed, put something on that has to do with Christ. Well, it's take you 30 minutes to get dressed, right? Right? Listen, I do this every morning. I'm listening to something every single morning and throughout the day. Another thing you can do is you can go to a Bible app. Get yourself a Bible app. I don't even say get yourself a Bible app. I'll show you one that you can go to. This, the version. version is a Bible app. You can go to that and you can actually go into um, read the Bible and actually pulled up and actually speak to you. Listen. Psalm 139, for the director of music of David, a psalm. Yeah. You guys, guys, I do this all the time. Every day I do this. Every day. You can't tell me that you can't find time to listen. I'm setting aside reading, getting your Bible out and reading it. Although you should do that. This is pretty much reading the same thing. The word is getting in you. You can do that while you get dressed. All right? You don't have time while you get dressed. All right, got you. When you get in your car, there's an iHeart, there's a fish, there's a, um, uh, 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 I can't remember the other station. Find the stations in the FM. Put it on. Okay? All you have to do is seek, 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 seek. You'll find ministry. You'll find worship music. It will take you a half hour to get to work. There you go. Indulge yourself in the word for a half hour. You get to work, hey, you can't do it then, right? I get it. You might have a lunch break. Use your lunch break. On your way home from work. Before you go to bed. Come on, guys. You can do it. You can do it. Take this 30-day challenge. Take it. And we'll talk about it later. But let's renew our minds with some good, positive, life-fulfilling words that change our lives. It helps us look at life in a, in, a, in a much fuller way so the Lord can bless us. He has a plan for us. 
He has a plan for us. And we'll never reach that plan if we're not in his word. So God bless, guys. I got to go up here. And I got to do some stuff. Now, y'all welcome to come if you want, but I know you won't come. It's too cold out here anyway. So God bless you guys. I'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.